Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So this video is all going to be about colour theory and about our feelings towards colours. But have you ever thought about colours being in fragrances? Do you ever smell something and think, wow, that smells purple or wow, that smells golden? I know I do. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology even. And I also just do some straight perfume reviews. So if that kind of thing interests you, please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So have you ever thought that you might have a colour preference in fragrance, like you have a colour preference in home decor or like you have a colour preference in your clothing? So I was inspired to make this video really because I'm a geneticist and I know that there are certain conditions where the senses can cross over with the wiring in the brain. And the, really the most famous example of, of this condition, which is called synesthesia, is when people see colours when they look at writing or numbers. But really the part of the condition that really interests me is when people have crossover between what they smell and what they see. So people literally see colours when they smell fragrances. And I'm not talking about how the general population maybe smells a cherry fragrance and thinks of red because cherries are red. It's more subtle than that. It's something that's more personal than that. It's something that it really is quite unpredictable, the colours that people smell when they actually have true synesthesia. Synesthesia is actually quite common in the population. As many as one in 25 people have some form of synesthesia. But really the smelling colours is really, truly rare. But actually, as children, we all have some form of synesthesia. And in some adults, that just continues. So I just got thinking about that. And I also got thinking about my preferences in colours when it comes to my wardrobe. And I just wondered whether I had a colour preference when it came to fragrance. So basically this video, I'm just going to run through each of the colours. I'm going to talk about the associations we have with those colours. I'm going to talk about the feelings and emotions those colours evoke. I'm going to talk about colour theory generally. And I'm also going to give plenty of examples of fragrances that to me smell of that colour. So let's start with red. So red is a colour that really demands our attention. It's probably the second most attention grabbing colour after yellow. And it's something that's really associated with boldness and risk in our minds. I think there's been research that's shown that people betting with poker chips that are red in colour are far more likely to bet more on average than people who are playing with other colours. There's also been research into waitresses when they're wearing different colours and found that waitresses wearing red get bigger tips. The colour red in nature is associated with fire in our minds and it's associated with danger as well. Danger, signs for danger are often red coloured. Red is associated with luck in certain cultures. So for example, the Chinese culture at New Year will give each other red money bags. Red is also associated with passion and desire and love. And in India, people will wear red saris when they get married. And also we have red light districts. So it's very much associated with sex. More negatively, red is also associated with war and anger. And it's been found that people wearing red in contact sports are up to 5% more likely to win than people wearing other colours. Red is also associated with poppies, it's associated with blood, and so that also links to, to war. But really, red is quite a happy, upbeat kind of colour, but it can also be quite a disturbing colour. It's not a relaxing colour, red. So in fragrance, red really makes me think of certain types of roses. It really makes me think of tithe roses. It also makes me think of, of certain fruits. So things like cherries, strawberries, also things like cranberry, wine, chilli and even cinnamon. So what about fragrances? Which ones make me think of red? Well, I've, I've actually realised that a lot of these fragrances are actually packaged in red bottles. So that's kind of a clue that you can go along with for the most part, I think. So the one that really stands out for me is Kaylee's Eden Juicy Apple. That's a very red apple kind of fragrance. And it also has some red berries in there. It has strawberry to me quite prominently. But that one just really makes me think of red sugary fruits, really. Another one for me that stands out as very red is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. The cherry in there really is the thing that really makes that very red. And there's also been a little bit of research about almond scents and what people think of with almond scents. And it's been found that almond in fragrances can also make people think of red. So I think that's maybe also contributing to the red feel of that fragrance. 
Another fragrance that really makes me think of the red colour is Chopard's Love. The bottle is also a, just a massive clue here, but it's just got so many different types of rose in it and it's also got cinnamon. That combination really makes me think of something that's very, very red. Another fragrance that makes me think slightly of red in the opening is L'Anse de Rouge. And I think that really has those spices in the beginning that really make me think of something that's a little bit red. So next let's go on to pink. So pink is really a mix of white and red. And so it has both of the elements of red and white. So it has the sort of the love aspects of red and also the compassion and purity of white. Pink represents nurture and kindness, and it's also a name for carnations, so you might call carnations pinks. I think pink in general is something that is used to symbolise good health, so you might be in the pink, or feeling rosy, or tickled pink if you're happy. Pink today is also really strongly associated with girls, but really historically it was associated with boys. Pink is known in colour theory as a very calming colour and actually prisons used to paint the insides of their cells pink to calm prisoners because in the short term it did have a calming effect even if in the longer term it didn't work. Also sports teams have been known to paint their opponents dressing rooms pink in order to put them off their game which I find really strange. Pink to me has certain associations, so I think when I think of pink, I think of certain skin tones and I also think of Barbie. But really, I think pink in fragrance makes me think of berries. It makes me think of very plush berries. So things like raspberry is a very dark pink. Pink can also make me think of certain flowers. So things like peony and roses can also be pink. And I also think of other fruits with pink that aren't actually pink. So for example, lychee makes me think of pink. So what about pink in fragrances? Well, I think the one that really makes me think of pink is Narciso Poudre, because it's just such a, a pink rose with that sort of powdery muskiness. It just is a very pink, a very pastel kind of pink fragrance. A brighter pink to me is something like Angel Nova. That's a fluorescent pink, a very Barbie pink. And that is, you know, raspberry, rose, lychee, just a very, very bright pink. Then there are also fragrances like the fragrance from Juicebox, the, the Siren and Sailors fragrance that also has rose, but also some booze in it. And that's just, a, again, a dark kind of pink fragrance, very much along the lines of something like Roses Vigny by Mansera or, or in Montal's Intense Cafe. And then there's also fragrances like Coach EDP, which is raspberry, it's rose, and it's a very fresh rose and very fresh raspberry, but with some suede. That also makes me think of pink. It makes me think of pink handbags. The next colour is orange, and orange is a bright, happy kind of colour. It's a mix of yellow and red, and so it shares both characteristics. It's an optimistic colour. And it's something that in branding is said to make people think something is good value. I've no idea why. I think orange for me really makes me think of harvest time. It really makes me think of autumn, I think because of maybe pumpkins and also because of the colours of the leaves on trees in the autumn. I think orange for me is also associated very strongly with the Netherlands. So orange is a really important symbolic colour in Hinduism and also in Buddhism. A lot of Buddhist monks dress in orange. I think for me in fragrance, orange makes me think of citrus. That's really, you know, orange is orange, isn't it? But it also makes me think of softer spices, but also fiery pepper. And it also makes me think of things like osmanthus and also apricots. So which fragrances make me think of orange? I think the one that really makes me think of a kind of a ready orange, a, a hot orange, is uh, Bouquet Encore by Orchestra Parfums. That fragrance has a very strong sort of peppery note at the beginning. And I think that's what gives it that orange hue because really overall it's a tuberose fragrance. Sunflower Pot by Floral Street also makes me think of orange. And I think that's because it's mainly a peach bellini in the beginning. That's really the biggest note for, the, for me in that fragrance. It's also just really fruity. But really as this dries down, it becomes less orange. I'd also put fragrances like Atelier Cologne, Clementine, California, and also things like Orange Sanguine in this orange category. I think anything that's really heavily orange citrus is going to smell orange. So the next colour I'm going to talk about is yellow. So yellow is the colour of optimism. It's the colour of sunshine. And really yellow for me is also associated with the summer. 
As far back as the ancient Egyptians, yellow pigments were used to highlight the gods. So yellow is associated with deities. Yellow is associated in nature with danger. So animals and plants that want to warn other animals and they are poisonous will colour themselves with yellow pigment. And actually even things that aren't poisonous that want to mimic being poisonous will also show yellow colourings. Yellow is used on danger signs, it can be used as warning signs, and it is also something that is associated in our minds with sickness. So you might have yellow fever, or you might be yellow bellied if you're cowardly. Yellow is also associated with springtime because people think of daffodils, they think of egg yolks, those are the really yellow things in nature. I think I also think of the yellow jersey in the Tour de France, and I also think of yellow post-it notes. So what about in fragrance? What comes to my mind when I think of yellow fragrances? Well, things like lemon in fragrances really smells very yellow. Also things like banana smells yellow. The banana of the floral world as well smells yellow to me, Ylang Ylang. But also tropical florals like tiari and frangipani. Mimosa can smell yellow, pineapple can smell yellow. I think when I think of yellow in fragrances, the most yellow fragrance that I've ever smelt was Reflection by Mask of Milano. That's a mimosa fragrance. And that just has a very bright, very light yellow kind of almost fluorescent feeling about it. I guess along a similar line are fragrances like Exotic Mimosa by Zara, which is in my own collection. And also things like Belle de Grasse by Fragonard. They all have mimosa and they all have that yellow feeling to them. So another yellow fra feeling fragrance is one by Francesco del Oro and that's Philodenia and that fragrance is a yellow and white floral fragrance and it also has a slight soapy feel. So next is gold and gold symbolises wealth, prosperity, opulence and extravagance. It's a very warm metallic colour and gold really makes us think of kings and queens and of jewellery and it also makes us think of the sun. Gold has a very special place in many religions and it's also a feature of many fairy tales and legends. Gold in fragrance can make me think of various things. So I think of things like honey. I also think of very solar feeling fragrances. And I also think of things that are caramelised. Ambers can also make me think of gold, as can myrrh and also white and yellow floors. It's very related to yellow really, but it's just a little bit warmer. So the fragrances that really make me think of gold are things like Bois Doré by Van Cleef and Arpels. That really has a very golden feeling about it. So that's a, a, a Tonka fragrance, really. It, but it's got like a, this, this sort of burnished nuttiness about it to me. And yeah, that one just makes me think of gold. Very much sort of something along the lines of, of a very 80s kind of sun cream to me, Bois Doré almost. Another one that gives me a golden feel is Orchid Soleil. And I think that's really the chestnut and also the, the florals in that fragrance that really give it that kind of burnished feel but also the vanilla I think and yeah it just has the sort of the same feeling or similar feeling to Bois Doré. Also along the same lines are, is, are things like Terracotta by Guerlain that also has that floral solar feeling going on but also things like Elisab Le Parfum with the honey really make me think that that fragrance smells golden. Things also like El Lem à la Folie which has Ylang Ylang and Myrrh also feel very golden to me. So next is white and white is a colour that reflects all light. I think really white is something that makes you think of purity, it makes you think of elegance, it makes you think of cleanliness even. A lot of hospitals are painted white to remind people of cleanliness as a kind of dogma almost. Also white has negative connotations so it can make you think of blankness, of emptiness and it can also just be quite stark. White is something that's seen as safe. So we might say that people can tell white lies, which is basically saying that things that don't matter. So white is something that's kind of innocuous, that, that's not going to harm you. I think it's really interesting with white how there's a split in cultures between East and West. So in Western cultures, white is associated with angels and it's also associated with white wedding dresses to, to show virginity almost. In Eastern cultures, white is seen very differently. So white is the colour of mourning. It's the colour of death. I guess in nature, what we think of with white are things like snow and also milk and maybe even lace. I think in fragrances, I think of things like, like milk, maybe even cream. I think of very clean musks, white musks. I also think of linen, powdery fragrances. And I also think of all those white florals. So things like jasmine, tuberose, 
gardenia, they all make me think of white. So which fragrances really make me think of white? I would say the one that really stood out to me was Musk Diamant by La Nuit Tresor by Lancôme. So that one is a very white musk forward fragrance, but there's also raspberry and there's also rose. And the raspberry really makes it feel a little bit sparkly almost. There's something almost like a diamond about that. I think it's very appropriately named. It's very clear and very, very stark, that fragrance almost. Another one that I think of with white is, is Madonna's Truth or Dare. And I guess it's the, the white florals in that. I guess it's the tuberose. But I think, you know, something that, that Madonna Truth or Dare is, is compared to something like, like Fracas by River Piguet. That's a fragrance that also would make think, people think of something that was white. There is also really the variation of cream. And cream to me are things that could be a little bit off-white. So things like ambrette to me smells off-white. It's almost like a beige kind of colour, ambrette. I'd put sandalwood in the cream category and I'd also put light nuts as well in the cream category. And for that reason, I would put things like Glossier U in the cream coloured category. I think really cream is not really a great descriptor for it. It's more of like anything that's slightly off white, really. It's not really just cream for me. Another fragrance that I put in this category would be something like Rolling in Love. And that's not really a cream fragrance either. It's more of an off white. It's more like the colour of my skin almost. It's something that's really not a pure kind of colour. It's something that's in between many colours. But I think because of that ambrette in there and because it just is so skin-like, that's the colour it makes me think of. So the next colour is green and really green is the colour of energy, it's the colour of rebirth and therefore it's also the colour of spring. Green really gives this feeling of freshness, this feeling of harmony and, and peace but also of balance and hope. Green to me is a, a colour of luck, it's something that's associated in my mind with shamrocks, with four leaf clovers and therefore also with St Patrick and also with Ireland. More negatively green is associated with greed, jealousy and envy, you're said to be green with envy if you are envious. I think in fragrance, green is just an entire category, isn't it? It's something that, you know, you can have a green fragrance. But to me, I think green is associated with certain herbs, although some herbs also make me think of things that are silver. I think really the, the thing that really makes me think of green is something like a tomato leaf, which has a little bit of an earthiness to it as well. There are also things like lime citrus that really makes me think of green. Blackcurrant can also smell a little bit green. You can also have green tea that can make you think of green. I think also certain florals can smell green, so things like tuberose can smell green, jasmine, lily of the valley. But also you can have green in, in things like violet leaf, and there can also be green fruits, so things like watery melons, also green apples, and even cucumber. So the fragrances that really make me think of green are things like Miller Harris's Found at Dusk, which is really a blackcurrant fragrance, but the greener aspects of the blackcurrant are very present. There's also tomato leaf in that fragrance. There's mint, and it just has a little bit more of a, a kind of herbal feel to it, really, than anything else. It is certainly fruity, but there's definitely a very green nuance there. Another fragrance that's green in a slightly different way is something like Le Jardin de Monsieurie, and that's a very watery green feeling fragrance. And I think, you know, it has those green florals as well in there. It has that jasmine that's very green. So yeah, totally different kind of green. Also very green, but in a very different way, is something ozonic like Marc Jacobs' Eau de Decan. So that fragrance has pear, it also has blackcurrant, which can feel a little bit green. And it also has Lily of the Valley, Magnolia and also Ivy. So it's just a very green feeling fragrance overall. So the next colour is silver. And really to me, silver is something that was really hot around the millennium. Everything was silver. It was a very futuristic kind of colour. And it's something that really reflects elegance and sleekness. But also it's a cold colour and it's a metallic colour. Silver makes me think of mirrors. It's a very reflective colour. And silver also makes me think of age. So you might say something like the silver screen if you're referring to old films, or you might call someone a silver fox if they're an older person. And then on the negative side with, with silver, you might think of being in second place because silver is often give, given to people who come second in competitions as opposed to gold in first place. And you might also think of disloyalty. So Judas was paid in silver pieces to be disloyal to Jesus. So which notes in fragrance really make me think of silver? I think the one that really is associated for me is, is iris. Iris can be very, very silvery. It can also be heavier sometimes, and then it's not quite so silvery, but sometimes it's very, very silvery. 
Another one is oak moss, and that's more of like a, a grey kind of silveriness, a green grey kind of silveriness. Champagne, ambroxan, also metallic notes can smell very silver to me. So things like blood in fragrance, that can smell very metallic and therefore it smells silver. Also smoke can smell silver and also things like aldehydes can smell silver or sometimes they smell pearlescent, sometimes they smell powdery, so more white. But yeah, the, there are certain types of aldehydes that can smell silvery. So which fragrances make me think of silver? Well, Metal Wave by All Saints. And I don't know whether that's just the name, but it also makes me think of pencil shavings, that fragrance. So I just think of the lead of the pencils and I think that's why I think of silver with that fragrance. Another one is Lunar Dust by Mabel Orama. And I think the thing that makes that fragrance silver is really the iris. And there's also, I think, some aldehydes there. Dior's Bois d'Ajon is also a very silvery smelling fragrance. And again, it might be the name because, you know, silvery, silver forest, Bois d'Ajon. But I think, it, I think it's really the iris in that fragrance that makes that smell very silver. Another fragrance that I've smelt that I think smells silver is Rook Metaverse because that fragrance is based on computer circuitry. And I guess that's what's making it smell a little bit silvery. So the next colour is blue and blue is associated with calmness, tranquility, serenity and also just the planet really. We always think of our planet as being blue. More negatively, blue is associated with coldness and sadness and really today as well it's associated with, with boys, the, the, a male gender, just like pink is associated with girls. Interestingly, weight loss plans often advise people to eat off blue plates because blue is a very unappetising colour and it's not associated with food in the natural world and that sort of turns your your appetite senses off almost when you see blue and also in hinduism and also in christianity blue is associated with very holy things so often figures will be painted with blue backgrounds or have blue skin if they are holy in the natural world blue just makes us think of the sky and also of the oceans but blue in fragrance is really an entire category again and it's really interesting that all these words are used as categories of fragrances. I find that really fascinating. And it really shows you the amount of synesthesia that, and the thinking of synesthesia that's going on in the world of fragrance. So of course, all aquatic and marine smelling fragrances can smell blue, but also ozonic fragrances can sometimes smell more blue than they can green. I'd say to me as well, certain mints can smell blue. So spearmint to me smells blue and icy. But I also think some more herbal floral kind of fragrances, so things like rosemary and also things like lavender can smell very blue to me instead of purple or green. I also think blue fragrance is really associated with cooler scents rather than warmer ones. So for me, blue fragrances are really just not a thing in my collection. I just, I'm just not a big fan of blue fragrances. But the ones that spring to mind are things like Sailing Day by um, the Replica line, the fragrances from uh, Maison Martin Margiela. I think that fragrance really is just a very marine kind of smelling fragrance. It just has a, a very freshness. It has some florals. It also has some, some herbs in there, but it's really just a marine fragrance overall. Very blue smelling. One that I tried recently and reviewed over the summer was Hydra Fig by Miller Harris. And that's a marine smelling fragrance, but with fig notes, as you might be able to guess from the name. It really is what it says on the tin, that fragrance. And then, of course, so that there are the really sort of very famous kind of blue smelling fragrances like Bleu de Chanel and also Dior Sauvage. So the next colour is purple and purple is a mix of red and blue and therefore it has both qualities to it. It's a mix. So it has that passion, but it also has that serenity. So purple is a colour that really makes me think of teenagers. I really feel like teenagers really go towards purple. I think purple is a colour as well that makes me think of mysticism, it makes me think of fairy tales, it makes me think of gothic feelings and it also has quite a religious feel purple as well. It's also quite opulent. I know that purple pigments were really hard to make and they're, they were therefore associated with, with the monarchy and royalty and especially in England. So purple is really associated with wisdom, with wealth, with independence and also just with mysticism. Purple as well makes me think of autumn. I think it's the fading light and the longer nights. I think that's why I think of purple in autumn. I guess in fragrance, purple is associated for me with very random things. So for example, it's associated with the fantasy orchid accord, not the vanilla orchid, but that kind of Tom Ford orchid is definitely a purple kind of smell. Also, I think of berries. So I think of blackberries, I think of black currants. And also that kind of American grape kind of smell, that, that sort of US grape that we don't really have in Europe. 
that's definitely also a purple smell. I also think licorice, whereas sometimes it can be black, sometimes it's just purple. If it's not so strong or if it's a really sweet licorice, it can generally be a purple kind of smell. So which fragrances really make me think of purple? Well, the ones that really spring to mind are Velvet Orchid by Tom Ford, because that has that sort of purple orchid but it also has all those purple bulb flowers. And I think really it's the, it's the purple orchid that makes those bulb flowers smell more purple than they otherwise would. I also think fragrances like Wanted Girl by Night, which is a very US grape kind of smelling fragrance, is something that really makes me think of purple. Another one to me is Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. So that fragrance has violet in it. And normally violet would sit in a violet category. But I think because of the licorice and also the cherry and also the anise in that fragrance, it just smells a little bit darker. And also with those darker musks, it just pushes it more into the purple category here. So those are my purple fragrances. So next is violet. And violet is really a variation on purple, but it's a much more light, bright version of purple. And really, Violet is traditionally associated with sensitivity, it's associated with narcissism even, and it's also associated with wisdom. And I think really with, with Violet, I think of extremes. I think of things like ultraviolet, and I think of something like mysticism. It's sort of like a little bit like purple in that way. So of course, Violet makes me think of the flowers. And really, in fragrance, Violet is often paired with rose or it's paired with fruits. And I think those kinds of notes are really the things that make me think of violet in combination. So, of course, the most famous violet fragrance is really Insolence by Galan, and that has those fruity notes in there as well as the violet. Another fragrance that smells very violet to me is something like Amouage Opus 3. So that fragrance really is quite a bookish kind of smelling fragrance in a way. It's very powdery but it also has violet and it's just a little bit more of an austere kind of violet, but definitely something that still has that violet feel to it. Next is another variation on purple, which is lilac. And lilac is a colour that's associated with innocence, friendliness, youthfulness, delicacy, and also emotions. Lilac is really a pastel version, isn't it, of purple. It's more of like a blue pink version of purple. And I also think that lilac really makes me think of in fragrance along the same lines. So things definitely like lilac, but also wisteria, hyacinth and bluebells. So the fragrances that I really think of when I think of lilac are things like Drop to Isse by Isimiyaki. That fragrance has lilac in it. So of course it's going to smell a little bit lilac. I think that fragrance as well has that sort of creaminess and that soapiness, which really tones down the anise that's also in that fragrance that could really turn that fragrance into a purple fragrance, but really that's a lilac fragrance overall. Another one that strikes me as quite lilac is something like La Mandière by James Healy. That fragrance has hyacinth, and I think that's really what makes it smell a little bit lilac, but it's really toned down by the fact that it has lime blossom and it also has almonds. So it has a, a real creaminess, again, much like the creaminess that you get in Drop to Isse. And I think that's really what keeps it that pastel colour and keeps it in the lilac category rather than the violet category or the purple category. So next is brown and brown represents comfort, stability, strength, resilience and also the feeling of being grounded because the earth is literally brown. Brown makes us think of nature, but it also makes us think of death and decay. It's a very autumnal kind of colour. It's also a warm colour. Brown is something we see all around us. It's the colour of tree trunks, it's the colour of human hair, it's the colour of skin, and it's also this colour of eyes. And I guess brown has its positive and negative associations. So you might think of positively of brown as something like chocolate, something delicious, or you might think of faeces in something more negative. So it definitely has that kind of split personality brown. And it's just not a, a colour that excites people, is it brown? It's just something that is just very neutral almost. So in fragrance, there are loads of different notes that make me think of brown, but really the, the main ones are things like chocolate, patchouli, vetiver, light nuts like hazelnuts, styrax, benzoin, deeper vanillas, and also suede and some very much lighter leathers can make me think of brown too. I think for me, the ones that really make me think of brown are things like Acro Dark, which could also be construed as a black fragrance. But I think really for me, it's brown because of the patchouli. So that's a dark chocolate fragrance, but 
really the patchouli is very strong for me in that fragrance. I think that's what keeps it on the brown side. Also fragrances like um, Angel Muse smell very brown to me. So that's a hazelnutty kind of chocolatey fragrance, but also with vetiver and patchouli. It's just brown through and through really that fragrance. Another fragrance that makes me think of brown is Italian leather. That one just is a very kind of deep leathery fragrance but it also has those resins and it also has that vanilla that just sort of lightens up and makes it more of a brown leather than a black leather and the final color is black so black is really the absence of color it's a color that that just absorbs all light so black is associated with space it's associated with death it's associated with black holes with formality with the occult with black cats and it's something as well that just makes you think of things that are overwhelming sometimes or things that are depressing even. And it's a colour that makes you think of something authoritative, something that's, that's powerful and sometimes something that's overwhelming or even depressing. I guess in a way black is associated with nostalgia through black and white films. It's also associated with, with danger through black belts in, in karate. It also makes me think of fashion with little black dresses like Chanel made and also with modernity like the Model T Fords or with Audrey Hepburn's black dress in Breakfast at Tiffany's. In fragrance, I think black is a very hard thing to smell because it's something that's quite rare. To have a black fragrance, it has to be very, very dark. And the things that make me think of black are things like treacle, molasses, things like dark ouds really black leathers. Also things like petrol-like violets can smell black to me. Some really dark roses can smell black, but really they're very rare things to find in fragrance for me. I, I very rarely smelt something that I thought was black. Licorice can sometimes smell black, but not always. Sometimes it's more of a purple kind of smell. So I think the one that really stands out for me as something that was very, very black was actually a fragrance that's called Black to Black, and that's by Mansara. I think technically that fragrance is a leathery rose oud, but to me it sort of had almost like a crude oil kind of smell. It was a very, very dark, fuel-like smell to me, that fragrance. Another one that I haven't smelt, and this is rare because I just don't smell black fragrances in general, mostly, and what I choose to sniff, but the one that I've been told smells black is Black Afghano by Nasamato. And that fragrance, again, is an oud-based fragrance, but also with incense. So that's the final colour in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button. And please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know, do you already think of fragrances in terms of their colours? Have you noticed that you, you go towards one colour over another? Are you a cool or warm fragrance kind of person? Do your clothing choices reflect your, your choices in fragrance? Please let me know down below and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.